But if we really want to use this as a pro device, it would be really useful if we had voice controlled macros so that we can say, hey, ripple delete, and then it would ripple delete the clip or open retime, and then it would open the retime of the editing thing. So, you know, it's getting to out there. But today we're building this um, DIT iPad case thing, I guess you could call it. Yeah, this project really started a couple of weeks ago when I switched to DaVinci Resolve. And so what I realized is that my iPad Pro is just way faster, faster than my Windows computer and my Mac computer as well, because it has that M1 chip in there and it's also very optimized. So yeah, then I started, you know, editing on this thing and I realized it would be really handy if we had like the SSD caddies in there, just like the portable editing hub video. I did pre-check like a lot of things, like how many drives can you connect to this thing? Does it work with the CF Express Type-B reader? What kind of hubs do we have access to? And, and how can we make this as stable as possible, so to say? And it's really fast uh, to like load in footage and also just to view footage. Like if I do this on my Windows computer, I have to wait at least like 10 seconds before it plays. But the conclusion I kept coming down to is that it would be really too thick if like with the housings around there and stuff. And initially I thought like the housings, because they're made of metal, that they're there for cooling. But that doesn't really seem to be the case. Like they're not connected with any thermal pads, that kind of stuff. And so I still had the CF Express Type B card reader laying around, which didn't really work. And I took that one apart just to gain some confidence to see if like, you know, how easy is it to take these things apart? And can we order new ones and then destroy those for this project? So, but that really gave me confidence to, you know, do this project in, in a proper way. After that, I kind of started coming up with a rough layout of the hubs that I already had. Now, most of these are kind of broken, so I, I used them mainly to check out, is it even possible, you know? Where do I want the SSDs to be in place? Like, how am I holding this thing? And what would be a logical placement for this stuff? And then after that, I'd continue researching on you know, what kind of hubs we can put in this thing, which was a very difficult process because I needed a port configuration which was very unique, so to say. There didn't seem to be anything out there because it's so illogical to use for anything else, right? That's not a port configuration that anybody really needs. Yeah, so I think I figured it out. We have the CF Express Type B card reader, which will be separate because we can't get that integrated into one of these things. We have all the SSDs that go into a 10 gigabit per second adapter, and that goes into the 10 gigabit port of some kind of USB hub over here. So initially I thought like, okay, I had this hub that I found which did have 3.2 connection on the inside, and I thought I'd just add another hub to that. In testing this thing, it became very unstable. And so when you'd unplug one of the drives or something would happen, you'd shift this thing a little bit, everything would just kind of crash and stop working. And that's something I did not want to deal with. I don't want to be transferring footage and then it just stops working. That could like corrupt files and do all kinds of strange stuff. So. I really did, yeah, I had to downgrade the design quite a lot. The CF Express Type-B card reader, which is really small for my box, just did not achieve the rated speeds. And that's kind of also my fault. Uh, it says 10 gigabit, gigabits per second, but I should have been able to tell by how small the casing is on this thing. That does not seem like it's equipped to handle 10 gigabits per second. What I ended up doing though is taking the SanDisk one that I already owned because the warranty on that one is gone anyway, so I have no trouble taking that one apart and using that one. But the heatsink on this thing is really quite massive, which is like the main culprit as to why this thing turned out so thick. But yeah, the, um, the hub was also really quite difficult to take apart. I generally don't know how they got that in there. They must have like friction fit it or something, and it was way harder to take apart than any of the other hubs. So I was a little bit concerned that it wouldn't work anymore. But in the end, got everything out there, it was pretty nice. Now, I didn't have a caliper that could actually reach to uh, the entire iPad. What I ended up doing, which was really sketchy, was just asking ChatGPT for the measurements. I'm sure I could have found them somewhere else, but for some reason, I fully trusted this thing. <laughs> with, and I drew, drew out a CAD, but it worked out quite nicely. You know, if you're enjoying the video so far, also consider subscribing. I have a really awesome project coming up, two projects actually. This is a concept desk that I'm building right now. So this place is a complete mess if you look from to the side of the cameras. And um, there's some really interesting videos coming up. So if you could do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. If you don't, you might never see another one of my videos because 
it doesn't end up in your suggested feed. So, yeah. So I really underestimated how much time it would take to model a case for the iPad Pro. Like, I thought it would just be like a two hour project or something like that, which it might have been, but in terms of like my process for CAD drawing in this project as well was very different from how I normally do stuff. So normally I just measure it up, kind of wing it into position and yeah, then print it and test fit it. And then usually it would fail like a couple of times, which is very inefficient, of course, because the printing process takes quite a long time. But for this project, though, I really modeled out each PCB and, you know, put it into position, really figured it, figuring out like how am I going to mount this thing and where are all the ports, that kind of stuff. So yeah, after that first test print, put it all together, uh, checked its functionality for a little bit of a, of a while, so to say, I really tested it out, see if it was actually worth it to, to make a video about this as well. Only issue I was with is that it looks really ugly, and that's because it's so thick, and you know, it looks like one of those old Dell devices or something, which isn't too bad. I, it's mainly about the function, right? But then I really took back to the CAD, improved the design, finished up any of the, the major flaws or the minor flaws that it had. So in terms of mounting stuff and that kind of stuff, but also cleaned up the design a little, and then we could send it off to PCBWay, which is really awesome. I'm really glad that PCBWay is sponsoring the channel. I know that sounds like, but like the quality that they bring to the channel is really impressive, like because these projects actually get finalized instead of being in concept stage all the time, especially on this project as well. We weren't able to print this in a single piece on my printer because my print bed is too, too small. And that also makes me improve the visual uh, performance of the, the video quite a lot because I see the end result and I'm like, I get hyped again about, about the video and then I put in the extra effort to make this into a, a decent production, which is really nice. So thank you. <laughs> so if you don't know what they do, they're a prototyping service. They offer everything from PCB production and assembly, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and 3D printing. So you can upload the files, you get a simple, you know, an instant quote for what it's going to cost. So definitely check them out. I left a link in the description down below and also a link to the project file down below. So if you want to print this yourself, you can download the STLs there. So I received a package from PCBWay and initially I was really concerned because I opened it up and it looked really massive when it was still in the wrap. And so I thought like, oh, I must have messed up the scaling or something. But that's just because they package it, package it really well with like a piece of cardboard on there and that kind of stuff. So as you can see, I went for this really strange pattern design and that really helps with the visual size of it. It kind of blends it somehow to where it doesn't look as thick as it actually is, which is quite awesome. And basically we can put all the hardware in there and put it all together. And so this is really the main culprit as to why this thing is so thick. I mean, <laughs> the heatsink on this thing is massive. And so, uh, but I wanted that speed, you know, I wanted that 3.2 speed. Sure. This is a uh, quick release plate from, uh, what is it called, Peak Design. So we'll be able to add the Peak Design capture clip and that'll give us like a, a band so we can actually wear it on our like backs or something. So I think for a lot of people, the Peak Design Capture Clip might seem like a really strange integration, but the way I use the iPad as well is for using the Sidus Link app on uh, locations, let's say, where I dial in the lights. So you have an application where you can dial in video lights. And what keeps on happening is I put the iPad down, completely forget where it is, and then I end up not using the application. So this is really just personal to me. I also have this tiny little U-shaped USB-C connector. This is Thunderbolt 4. And I did search for like uh, ribbon cables, which would be quite nice, but then I would have integrated, like integrated it completely to where it would be invisible. And the issue with that is that if anything ever fails, let's say the power delivery fails on a thing, and you're on location and you need this thing to function. In this case, we can just unplug this thing and we can still use the uh, normal port on the iPad. But if it was a ribbon cable hidden in the casing, 
then that wouldn't be possible. I'm not entirely sure if I'm able to film this, but inside this mount here for the USB-C cable is a little indent for a bolt to go into. I'm actually really impressed that PCBWay even was able to get that stuff, like the the input or the um, support structure out of there. But that's going to allow us to put this little bolt in there. This is holding this cable in place, but this isn't going anywhere anymore, which is great. I'm really happy that worked. So you can see right there is the USB-C cable. And when we gra grab like a SSD, we can slide it up top and it just lands on that USB-C port over there. And this is going to go into the little hub over here. And we just need to hide this cable, which should be fine. Now, I'm not too proud of this design, but this is where the door... I guess it looks industrial, which is quite cool, but I mean, could have gone a little better. I'll put a little nut in there, put the bolt on this side, and just, uh, it screws on there. If you're interested to see how I use this thing, then definitely let me know. I'll, I'll make a separate video about that because some people are just here for the build. And so yeah, this is what we're left with. A really awesome DRT iPad, power delivery on the side, HDMI on the side, also a USB on the side and Ethernet, which is pretty awesome. And of course the CFX Best Type-B card reader alongside the SSD caddy. And this really helps with editing, right? You can just hold it like this and do all the stuff that you need to do. You can plug it into a screen if you would like to do a presentation, that kind of stuff. I don't really edit with this thing on like a, a main display. I don't really see how that's useful. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you in the next one.